Hi, welcome to our Basics to Cooking with the Sun class. Uh, appreciate you taking a few minutes to learn more about how to harness the power of the sun for your cooking as well as several other ways. And we like this to be interactive, so if you have questions, please submit your questions via the box that you see on the right-hand side of your screen, and uh, we'll get an email of those questions and get back to you um, as soon as we possibly can with answers, but um, always within no more than two working days. But And if you'd like to see this in a little larger format, if you notice there's a little emblem with four arrows in the lower right-hand corner of each slide, you can click on that, and that will then bring it to a full screen. If you uh, w come up with a question you want to ask, you want to reduce it, just hit the escape key on your computer and that will bring it back down to a smaller size so you can ask your question. My name is Paul Munson. I've been working with Sun Ovens for the last 18 years and I've had the opportunity to teach people all over the world on five different continents how to cook in the sun. It's also taught me a great deal about uh, how to be a lot more proactive in being prepared for emergencies. My wife and I have been preparing for the last uh, 17 years, and we have quite a bit of food storage as well as we live on a, about a 160-year-old farmhouse with a few acres and raise chickens and a lot of our own food. So we practice emergency preparedness as, frankly, a lifestyle, both uh, trying to be prepared here on Earth as well as in eternity. Over the next few minutes, what I hope to accomplish with this class is to be able to show you how to harness the power of the sun to cook and bake and boil and steam foods, to use it as a solar dryer and dehydrator, as well as how to make roasts or be able to be just better prepared overall for emergencies as well as save some money. I'm going to start by just showing you a brief video that will explain a little bit about the sun oven and how it works and then we'll move on to talk about the best ways to cook in the sun. Hi, I'd like to invite you to learn more about the All-American Sun Oven. An All-American Sun Oven can bake and boil and steam foods just with the power of the sun. It also can be used as a solar dryer or dehydrator or to boil or pasteurize drinking water. The Sun Oven is designed so the whole thing just sets up in a matter of seconds. It's a simple one-piece construction. It has a leg built into the back that allows you to raise or lower it to be able to meet the sun wherever it is in the horizon. So in the early morning, late afternoon, or winter, you'd have it raised up. In the summer, most of the time, you have it pretty much sitting close to the ground. And setting up the oven, as I said, was very simple. You just open this glass door. You put your food in the oven's chamber. And then there's two latches that allow you to latch the glass door shut to trap the heat inside. A sun oven will reach temperatures of between 360 on a perfect day, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and you can pretty much cook anything you want in it. The nice thing is, if you do realign it to follow the sun, your food isn't going to spill when you move it to follow the sun because it has this leveling tray. It has a built-in thermometer so you can tell the temperature at a glance, and there's absolutely no hassle to figuring out when the sun oven's aligned. It comes with these easy track alignment cubes. These you just point the sun oven towards the sun. There's two holes in each of the cubes. The sun shines through the top hole. When you have it centered over the bottom hole, then you know the sun oven is adjusted to exactly where the sun needs where it needs to be in the sunlight. The sun oven, you can take your food out of it. Obviously I've only had this food in now for a matter of seconds, so there's nothing these pots in for a matter of seconds, they're not really hot but you always would need to use oven mitts uh, or hot pads if you were going to do it. But to fold it back up to, to store it, you just fold it like this. It carries like a suitcase. You can put it away until the next time you're ready to harness the power of the sun for your cooking needs. So that gives you a little idea of how a sun oven works. Uh, when you use the sun oven, what's wonderful about it is you can pretty much cook anything that you cook in your gas or electric oven or on your stovetop with the exception of fried food. So even though we call it an oven, uh, you can cook most of the things you cook on your stove burners. The nice thing is when you do that in the sun, nothing burns and nothing dries out. So when roasts come out really moist and succulent bread has an incredible taste and texture. And the idea and the reason that things don't burn in the sun oven is that the entire chamber is an even temperature, an even heat. 
So if you uh, have a pot inside the sun oven, the food inside the pot, the pot itself, the air around the pot, all are exactly the same temperature. If you compare that to your stove burner, where, of course, you're transferring the heat from the stove burner to the pot, the pot's always hotter than the food, so if you don't stir it, it burns. But in the sun oven, because the pot and the food heat evenly, nothing burns, the sun, nothing dries out because it's a completely sealed chamber. There's no movement of air. It's an airtight chamber. So air doesn't move around, so it doesn't dry out food. So when you make roasts, they really come out moist and very, very succulent. And it's an incredibly easy way to cook and a very, very forgiving way to cook. But there are two ways to cook in the sun oven. Let's say you're going to make a chicken. If you took a three-pound chicken and you put it in a pot and you put it in the sun oven, if you realign the sun oven every 30 minutes to follow the sun, you can cook a three-pound chicken in about an hour and a half. Or you could take a frozen chicken, put it in a sun oven early in the morning, place it facing south where the sun is in the middle of the day, come back at supper time and have a cooked roast. So if you preheat the sun oven and realign it every 30 minutes to follow the sun, your cooking time is only going to be 15 minutes longer than it would be in your stovetop or your regular oven for each time you open the door, or you can slow cook. So it really gives you a, a great deal of flexibility in cooking that because of the non-drying, non-burning um, it's very hard to mess anything up. Now, baking bread in the sun oven um, comes out great. Uh, a couple of things you do want to keep in mind when you bake bread, just like in your regular oven, you do want to preheat the sun oven before you put the bread into it. Generally, on a sunny day, if you put a sun oven out in the sun, it will get up to 300 degrees in about 20 minutes, so it doesn't take a long time to preheat it. But when you proof your bread, you don't proof it to the same height you would when you're going to make it in your conventional oven. When you proof the bread for the sun oven, you let it raise till it's about a half to three quarters of an inch below the top of the bread pan. And the reason for that is that with the even heat of the sun oven and the entire chamber being the same temperature, let's say you preheat the sun oven to 325 degrees and then you put two loaves of bread in. Well, the bread's at the ambient temperature, so the temperature in the chamber of the sun oven is going to drop 50 to 75 degrees, and then it's going to gradually raise again. But if you've already proofed your bread to its full height, when that temperature drops and then comes back up, there's a good chance your bread could overrise and fall. So by just letting it proof till it's below the top of the bread pan, you'll find that that temperature drops and the bread will proof or will raise to just the right height. Also, when you bake bread in the sun oven, you spray a light mist of water on the dough just before putting it in, and you'll get a beautiful brown crust. Bread doesn't always brown in the sun, but if you just spray a mist of water on the dough, it will give you a nice brown crust, and you'll have delicious bread. Normally, I can make a loaf of bread in about 45 minutes. Two loaves take an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Um, but there's times on overcast days or times when I'm doing classes for the sun oven and people are and I'm baking bread and people stand in front of the oven, which blocks the sun and reduces the temperature, that I've cooked bread at temperatures as low as 250 degrees for twice as long as normal, and it doesn't dry out. So it's a very forgiving way to make bread. So many people tell me they have recipes that must be cooked at an exact temperature for an exact period of time, and I'll explain that in the sun oven you can cook it at a higher temperature for a shorter time or lower temperature for a longer time, and it's not going to make any difference in the quality of the bread. So it's a very forgiving way to make bread. You can make white bread, wheat bread, gluten-free bread, any kind of bread that you would normally bake. You could bake in the sun oven, and you'll be very, very impressed with the bread that comes out of the sun. Now, another thing to keep in mind with a sun oven is that it will very, very quickly pay for itself in energy savings. And... It'll pay for itself somewhat in what it saves in cooking fuel. The average American household spends about 14% of their utility budgets on cooking fuel. But particularly in the summer, people spend a lot more on air conditioning. And so if you're going to bake something, you bake it outdoors in the sun and oven, it doesn't then heat up your whole house, and that reduces the cost of your air conditioning considerably. A lot of people get sun ovens to be prepared for emergencies, and 
they discover very quickly how quickly it pays for themselves itself and then they use the money they save on their energy bills that by using the sun oven to help fund their other food storage and emergency preparedness needs so it is something that uh, will have a great cost benefit if you just start using it one thing that is very very good to make in the sun oven and a lot of fun is turkey you can make up to a 21 pound turkey by putting it in a baking bag and putting it in the sun oven. The leveling rack that we showed in the video earlier folds up and it goes in the bottom of the sun oven and then you can put a turkey in a baking bag and you'll find that it will come out really delicious. Anytime I've ever made a turkey, anybody who's eaten it has said that the light meat turkey is more moist than any dark meat they've ever eaten. It's incredible how moist it is. A couple things to keep in mind. One is you need to do it in the baking bag so that you can get a large turkey into the sun oven. But when you buy baking bags on the packages, there's often instructions that tell you to cut slits in the side of the baking bag. You don't want to do that when you're going to make it in the sun oven. And then you tie the baking bag tight so you can trap all the moisture inside the bag. If you take a... Um, some butter or olive oil or, and rub it on the skin of the turkey or you sprinkle some paprika just before putting it in the baking bag or turn golden brown and be delicious. It's hard to really describe how moist it is when it's cooked in the sun, but you'll be very impressed with the taste. And, you know, if you go out at Thanksgiving time, if you've got a freezer and you buy turkeys, you can put them in your freezer on really hot summer days. Nothing's, it's a lot of fun to tell your friends and neighbors you're making a turkey. And besides for having a delicious meal, then you have leftovers or sandwiches for quite a while. Sun ovens can be used year-round. The outside or the ambient temperature really doesn't have a, an effect on the sun oven. The key is the amount of sunlight. You have to have enough sun to cast a shadow to use the sun oven. So if you think of the groundhog, and on days when you can see a shadow, then you can cook in the sun. If it's overcast at a point that you can't see a shadow, it's not going to be a good day to cook in the sun oven. But it can be used year-round. I've cooked in temperatures as low as 10 below zero, and the temperature has no effect on it. It's just a matter then of um, the days in the winter are shorter, so the number of hours a day that you can cook in it are a little bit less in the winter. But you can use the oven year-round. Another great thing to make in the sun oven is beans. And so many people get a sun oven and try beans, and they're just amazed at the taste of the beans. The, uh, the beans get a flavor when they're cooked in the sun that you just don't get any other way. And I can't give you an exact time for beans because there's so many different types of beans as well as it depends if you do soak the beans overnight, just like uh, you would cook. If you soak them overnight, they'll cook a lot faster than they would if you don't. But pretty much you use about two and a half cups of water for each cup of dry beans. And I mentioned earlier that you could realign the sun oven and keep it at a higher temperature. So you could, by realigning the sun oven every 30 minutes, you can keep them boiling or you could just put them in in the morning and just let them slowly simmer all day. But you'll be very, very impressed with the taste of beans that are cooked in the sun. Now, there are several other things you can use a sun oven for besides for cooking. You can use it to boil or pasteurize water, and we're going to explain that in a little more detail in a few minutes. You can also use it for sun tea. It makes a wonderful natural dehydrator for fruits or vegetables or making jerky. It also is great for hot water. And as I talk to people about their emergency preparedness plans, very few people ever think about hot water. But the average American household uses more energy every day to heat water than they do to cook. Think of the number of times today you've already turned on a hot water faucet. And this, in a preparedness situation, you would still need hot water for things like taking a sponge bath or um, doing dishes or doing laundry, and you can heat hot water in the sun oven. If you find that bugs have made their way and have infested your grains or your dried foods, you don't have to throw it away. You can actually take your grains or dried foods that the bugs have infested, put them in the sun oven, bring it up to a temperature above 145 degrees Fahrenheit for six minutes, and that will, I'm sorry, for 10 minutes, above 145 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes, and that will kill the bugs, not only the live bugs, but in every stage of development that they're in. 
It can be used to sterilize medical instruments. Uh, it can be used like an autoclave to steam medical instruments. If you've got kindling wood that's gotten wet, you can dry it to get things started. If you're into sprouting, the sun oven is a great way to enhance your winter sprouting. And then even on days when it's overcast and you're not able to cook in the sun oven, when you can't see a shadow, you can use a sun oven like a retained heat cooker or wonder box. The concept of retained heat cooking is pretty simple. All you need to do is get the food half cooked using a conventional fuel source, then put it into a very well insulated box or basket, and it will finish slow cooking like a crock pot type of cooking. Well, the sun oven is very well insulated, so on days when you can't cook in it because it's overcast, you just leave it in the house. You can take whatever your, your half cooked food, put it in the sun oven, latch the door shut. Just leave it sitting in the house and it will slow cook and finish cooking just like a crock pot. Now, a sun oven is a wonderful way to rehydrate emergency preparedness foods. If you've got any freeze-dried or dehydrated foods um, and you look on the package, it will tell you that um, usually there's a, a recipe or a formula that says for each cup of whatever it is you're going to rehydrate, you use three or four cups of water and you take the water, you boil it normally, and you bring it to a boil, and then you pour it over what you want to rehydrate. Well, the wonderful thing about the sun oven is that you don't have to boil the water first. That does save an incredible amount of energy. At most altitudes, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but it takes as much energy to bring water from 212 I'm sorry, from 200 to 212, the last 12 degrees take as much energy as bringing the water from the ambient temperature up to 200. So if you don't have to boil the water first, it saves a lot of energy. But in an emergency preparedness situation, you take 25% less water uh, when you do it in the sun oven. You just, if it calls for four cups, you use three. You just put it all in a pot together, stir it thoroughly, put it in the sun oven, and it will rehydrate your preparedness foods without boiling the water first. And of course, many people are concerned about potable water as part of their preparedness planning, so the idea of using 25% less water for your cooking is very appealing, but you'll be very impressed with the taste of the sun-cooked preparedness foods. It really does enhance the taste even of those types of foods. So a lot of people have, um, you know, look at emergency preparedness and don't really have a clear plan as for how they're going to cook. So if the utility grid does go down, depending on where you live, you can use a sun oven for 50 to 85 percent of your emergency planning cooking. So that can really mean that whatever type of fuel you do store, you can store a lot less of it. It's important that uh, you keep in mind that if you are storing things like propane or butane, that the seals on the canisters are only good for five years. So you have to rotate them every five years or the fuel is going to leak out of it. Also, if you're storing propane, make sure you know how much propane you can legally store. And the reason for that is there's probably fine print in your homeowner's insurance policy that will say that they're not going to pay off in the event of a fire if you have too much of something that's illegal like propane stored. And in most areas of the United States, that's only two of the exchange canisters, two of the 20-pound exchange canisters. So, again, if you're storing fuel, for um, that's great, but if you don't only have to store it for days when it's overcast, you need a lot less of it. Another really good thing about the sun oven is the way it makes eggs. When I teach classes around the world on solar cooking, I oftentimes, one of the first things I do is have somebody bring me an egg and I put it in the sun oven. And if I just put one egg in the sun oven, I put it in without water, I'll have a perfect hard-boiled egg in about 35 minutes. And if you think about the even heat of bringing water to a boil and putting an egg inside of it, Pretty much we do the same thing with air inside the sun oven. It's a great way to demonstrate the even cooking of the sun oven. But the real benefit of making hard-boiled eggs in the sun oven is that fresh eggs will peel immediately. Anybody who gets fresh eggs or raised chickens knows that if you try to peel, you try to hard-boil a fresh egg and then you peel it, Normally, it's very difficult to peel. You get so frustrated with it, you almost don't want to eat it, and it sure doesn't look pretty when you get done. But we raise chickens, and I've taken eggs within 20 minutes dropping out of the chicken, hard-boiled in the sun oven, 
and I can peel them immediately. The membrane that builds up between the eggshell and the egg white completely disappears, and you can then take a fresh egg, hard boil it, and peel it. Now, if you put a whole bunch of eggs in a pot, any place they touch each other, they're going to get a brown spot. They're hard boil fine, but you're going to get a brown spot on the white of the egg. But if you take cardboard egg cartons and rip the lids off of them right on the leveling rack of the sun oven, you can actually cook two dozen eggs at the same time, and they come out perfect. Normally, I'll preheat the sun oven if I'm going to do two dozen eggs, and I leave them in for about an hour. After an hour, I open the door of the sun oven, and I take one egg out. I put it on a table or a flat surface, and then... Um, that allow it and spin it. If it spins nice and evenly like a top, then I know it's done. If it's still a little bit wobbly, I'll put it back in for about 15 minutes and then take all the eggs out and they come out perfect. It is important, by the way, if you are going to boil eggs that you've had in your refrigerator, that you take them out of the refrigerator about 30 minutes before you're going to boil them in the sun oven and just let them stand at the ambient or the room temperature and then you'll get a perfect egg every time. Sun ovens are made in the United States. They've actually been on the market for the last 29 years. I took over making them from the inventor 18 years ago. And all of the component parts in the sun oven, with the exception of the thermometer, are made in the United States. And they're designed so that they could be used in a developing country for 15 years with absolutely no maintenance. They're actually in use in more than 130 countries around the world. So they're very, very durable. They're reliable. And there's no reason it won't last a lifetime. It was really made to be used every day for 15 years and um, in the third world. So in the U.S., if you put it in a storage shed or garage when you're in a basement, when you're not using it, it will last a lifetime. Now, the way the sun oven works is actually quite simple. It's the greenhouse effect. The same idea if you live in a cold climate and you ever go out to your car on a cold day when it's sunny and you get in the car and it's really hot, well, that's the greenhouse effect of trapping the air inside of your car. Basically, that's the way the sun oven works. 60% of the energy for the sun oven comes from the sun shining directly into the oven's chamber. The remaining 40% come from the light that reflects off the glass and into the chamber. And the sunlight gets converted into heat energy and it gets really hot. We've designed the sun oven in a way that will trap that heat and um, maintain, retain it for a period of time. The way we do that, the components that go into making the sun oven, is uh, the most important part is the gasket. The gasket forms an airtight seal that traps the air inside the sun oven, and it then allows it to get really hot. Um, and that is the reason that unique, it's made of a proprietary material, and that unique material allows the sun oven generally to get 100, 125 degrees hotter than homemade solar ovens or some of the sun oven knockoffs that are sold on the market. The reflectors are made of an anodized aluminum, which is 86% reflective, which means 86% of the light that reflects on that hits it goes into the oven's chamber, and they're never going to oxidize, rust, or corrode. By the way, the reflectors never get hot, so you can touch them, and you're not going to burn yourself. If you have small children, they come and touch the reflectors. It's not going to burn them in any way. And reflectors clean just like glass. You use Windex or vinegar water or any kind of glass cleaner to clean the reflectors. The outer box of the sun oven is made of ABS plastic, but then there's an inner shell or inner box that's made of a black anodized aluminum. And the, between the aluminum inner box and the plastic outer box, there's a very thick bat of a non-toxic food-grade fiberglass insulation. And that food-grade insulation traps the heat inside the oven, but also makes it so that you can touch anywhere on the outer box of the oven and you don't feel any heat escaping from the inside of the sun oven as well. And that inner black anodized aluminum a uh, shell or box is very easy to clean. If you spill anything, you can just wipe it out with a dish rag, or if it's really messy, you can just spray it with a garden hose. Keep in mind, everything you cook in the sun oven, with the exception of bakery goods, you do cook in a pot or a pan with a lid on it to trap the moisture inside. So you don't get splattering in the sun oven the same way you do if you do it in a conventional oven. So the only time you have to clean anything is if you're like me and you're clumsy and you, feel, you spill food. Now, the door of the sun oven is made of a low iron tempered glass and by lowering or almost completely reducing the iron content of the glass it filters less sun and allows it to get hotter in there and 
Um, the low iron glass, frankly, is extremely expensive, but it allows the sun oven to get quite a bit hotter. And that uh, tempered glass does have an advantage. The only thing, as I mentioned, you can touch anywhere on the side of the sun oven. You're not going to feel any heat or the reflectors. The only part that's exposed that gets hot is the glass. If it's 350 degrees inside the sun oven's chamber, then the outside surface of the glass is going to be a temperature of about 150 degrees, 155 degrees Fahrenheit, which will sting if you touch it, but isn't going to burn. There is an advantage, by the way, to the glass getting hot, and that is it will keep your neighbor's dog from eating your pot roast. Any animal that's out in the daytime will sense the heat and will stay away from the sun oven. There are a lot of animals out at night that wouldn't necessarily sense the heat and wouldn't stay away from it, but most people don't have solar cooking at night, so you really don't have to worry about that. There's a frame or a bezel on the sun oven that's made of wood. It's a kiln-dried poplar wood, and the only maintenance we suggest you do for a sun oven is every five years or so you should take and rub some linseed oil or exterior wood stain on the wood to protect it. And if you do that, the sun oven will last a lifetime. By the way, the sun oven is warrantied. The reflectors are warrantied for 15 years to remain reflective and to not oxidize, rust, or corrode. The gasket's warrantied for 15 years against any type of cracking or failure. And if you do decide to get a sun oven for any reason you're not happy with it, you're going to turn it any time in the first 30 days and get a full refund of your money. So we do stand behind the sun ovens and we say it's guaranteed for 15 years. They've been on the market now for 28 years. So believe me, they have a long history and some pretty tough areas so we know it will last. The um, just want to mention briefly, I've uh, mentioned a couple of times about the our work around the world, and you know, the reason we are so passionate about what we do internationally is there's still over 2 billion people in the world who cook with wood or charcoal or animal dung as their primary cooking fuel. And when a woman cooks over a wood or charcoal fire, she inhales the same amount of smoke as smoking three packs of cigarettes a day. Each year in the continent of Africa alone, 1.5 Million, I'm sorry, 1.6 million children under the age of five die of respiratory diseases, primarily from the indoor air pollution of cooking fires. In more than half the African countries, more children under five die of respiratory disease than they do from HIV, or HIV, AIDS, and malaria combined. So when we can replace a great deal of that smoke with the sun, and in many places it's up to 85% of the smoke can be replaced with the sun, it has a huge effect on the health of women and children in developing countries. And you know, we don't solicit money for our work internationally. Our goal is that we want to help people in the U.S. save energy and prepare for emergencies, and then we use a portion of the proceeds from that to work in developing countries. So those of you who have sun ovens, I want to thank you because that's how we fund our work. In the picture on the screen there, you'll see I took that one after um, uh, one of my trips to Haiti after the earthquake, and you'll see several of the family size ovens, and behind it are large villager sun oven. A villager sun oven can make uh, 1,200 meals in an eight hour day, or it can make 28 loaves of bread an hour just with the power of the sun. And we're doing a lot. We've uh, subsidized the villager sun ovens for use around the world. We're really promoting them to be used in orphanages. Now, if an orphanage has 100 children, they only need 200 meals a day. They don't need the 1,200. But when we ship it to an orphanage, we ship with a whole package of 150 different pots and pans and insect flower, um, proof flour containers, everything that's needed for a turnkey bakery. During the hours when they're not cooking, they can bake bread and then sell the bread and create income or self-sufficiency. Many of us who are concerned about preparedness uh, really wonder what's going to happen with the U.S. economy. And if the U.S. economy ever went south, so many orphans around the world, so many orphanages around the world depend on support from Americans. And if our economy goes south, there's a good chance that donations to orphanages are going to drop. And so if they have a way to generate income, then they can hopefully be self-sufficient and continue even if donations do drop off. Also in Africa, normally a child would learn a trade from their parents, and when the kids get too old to be in the orphanage, um, oftentimes they leave without a job skill. If they've learned to bake bread while they're there, that gives them a job skill to take with them. So again, I just want to thank those of you who have sun ovens for helping us with what we do around the world. Now, you can use pretty much any kind of a pot or a pan in the sun oven that's oven safe. 
and there are some differences in PATs. Um, the most efficient kind of PAT to use is enamelware. Enamelware is uh, like your turkey roaster. It's a steel coated with enamel. It's probably got um, black or gray or blue speckles on it. And the reason the enamelware is most efficient is it's thin and it's dark. I mentioned earlier that you can make a chicken in an hour and a half by realigning the sun oven every 30 minutes. And if you want to do it quickly like that, then you do want to use enamelware because that's the fastest. But I also mentioned you could take a chicken, you could put it in a frozen chicken, put it in the sun oven early in the morning, set the oven facing south, leave for the day, come back at dinner and have a cooked roast. And if you're going to slow cook, then we strongly recommend that you use a cast iron pot or a Dutch oven. The Dutch oven is going to take an hour and a half longer to come up to temperature than the enamelware pot will, but the advantage of the Dutch oven is that once it comes up to temperature, even if you lose the sun completely, the retained heat of the hot Dutch oven inside the well-insulated sun oven will allow your food to finish cooking even if it starts raining. So if you know it's going to be sunny in the morning and you just get it up to temperature, then it will finish um, slow cooking throughout the day and still be ready at dinner time. A lot of people like using glassware like Corningware or Pyrex. That works out really well. Um, glassware is going to take about 15% longer to cook than enamel well will. So with most things, you start it a few minutes early, and it's no problem. Our viewers like using silicone bread pans or um, muffin pans, and that works well. Stoneware works well. The only kind of pot or pan you want to be cautious of is a shiny pot, like a stainless steel pot. That will reflect light out of the oven, and that's going to reduce the temperature inside of it. So you can still use a shiny pot in the sun oven, but we suggest you take a dark dish towel, cover over the shiny pot so it doesn't reflect the light out of the oven, and that will then allow you to um, use a shiny pot. Nothing will catch on fire, so you don't have to worry about the dish uh, towel, but you just don't want the shiny side facing. Same thing if you're going to use a casserole dish with aluminum foil. You want to put the shiny side of the foil facing the food and then put the dull side facing up and still put a dark dish towel over the dub, a dark dish towel over the dull side so it doesn't reflect the light out. Another thing that uh, you can use the sun oven for, as we mentioned, is for drinking water. You can boil or pasteurize water. Now, at most altitudes, water boils at 212 degrees, and that will kill off the biological contaminants. But you can kill the same biological contaminants by pasteurizing water. Water pasteurizes by bringing it to a temperature above 150 degrees Fahrenheit for six minutes, and that pretty much kills all the biological contaminants in it. Of course, the benefit of boiling is that you see the visual indication of the bubbles to know that the water is boiled. Well, there's a little device that's going to be part of a package we're going to mention in a few minutes. It's available for the sun oven. They're also sold on our website. Just That's called a water pasteurization indicator or a WAPI. What the WAPI does is it floats on the top of a pot or a pan or a mason jar, and it's got a plastic tube. The tube has wax in it. The wax is a green color. When the green wax and melts and goes to the bottom, then you know the water is safe to drink. You can take it out of the water, and you could turn the uh, tube over and reuse it hundreds of times. Now, if you gather water from a stream or your roof, um, you might want to keep a piece of cheesecloth with your sun oven. You could pour the water through the cheesecloth, and that will t uh, then take and filter any solid impurities, and then you can kill the germs in the water by boiling it or pasteurizing it in the sun oven. Another good use of the sun oven is it makes a wonderful solar dryer dehydrator. And if your garden was ever ready to be harvested at a time you couldn't use your electric dehydrator, having a way to dry or dehydrate would really be to your advantage, um, as well as if you want to do things like herbs. Herbs um, in the sun, you don't lose the nutrients from the herbs the same way you do if you um, dry them in an electric dehydrator. Also, people like using the sun oven for drying things that are smelly, like garlic or jerky, because you can do it outside and keep the smell outside. And basically, if you're going to use the sun oven as a dryer, there's racks that will be part of the package we mentioned in a couple minutes that um, are uh, we call them dehydrating and baking racks, and they come with a roll of parchment paper. You just rip a piece of parchment paper off, put it on the rack, and there's three racks, and so with the original leveling tray, you're able to dry four layers at the same time. Keep in mind that the 
thinner you slice the whatever you're going to dry, the faster it's going to dry. Just keep things separated, put them in the sun oven, and they work really well. Now, you may be wondering, because I keep mentioning the airtight seal in the sun oven, how you dry. There's two latches that normally latch the glass door of the sun oven shut when you're cooking. And what you do is you turn one of the latches in, and then you set the glass door on top of it. That's going to leave about a half an inch gap between the glass and the gasket of the sun oven, which will allow moist air to escape, but it will also keep the sun oven from getting too hot. So you just turn one of the latches in, you put it um, down, you can then put your um, right on the leveling rack, the three racks, so that gives you four layers then that you can dry or dehydrate. Generally for drying, what you do is you align the sun oven using the easy track indicator we showed in the video, and then you just move it back out of the sun, or move it back towards the east uh, about six inches, and you do that two or three times a day, and you'll have perfectly sun-dried foods. Now, the most popular way sun ovens are sold is with an, what we call the dehydrating and preparedness accessory package. And over 80% of the sun ovens are purchased um, are purchased with that package because that gives you the peace of mind, pretty much know you have everything that you need to be able to cook. I'm going to just briefly run through the items that are included in that package. It does include stackable pots. These are American-made pots. They're made by Columbian Home Products or the Graniteware brand, and but they're custom-made for the sun oven in that they have a indented base so you can stack two pots on top of each other inside the sun oven. Keep in mind that if you use the two pots at the same time, there's actually enough room that you could take two quart-sized mason jars, put them next to the pots, and cook side dishes. So you could cook four different things at the same time inside of it. And these pots come with two lids. One's a glass lid, and the other is an enamel domed lid. It also comes with a water pasteurization indicator, or WAPI, as I mentioned earlier. And by the way, we call this a multi-fuel WAPI, because many types of WAPIs can only be used in solar ovens, but this multi-fuel WAPI can use with any type of fuel. So you can use it with uh, charcoal or butane or propane or you know, um, kerosene, pretty much any kind of fuel. And the benefit, of course, of pasteurizing is that it takes a lot less time and a lot less energy. So if you're in a preparedness situation, you're trying to conserve your fuel and you're doing water on days you can't use it in the sun, you're then able to use a lot less energy. So as I said, there's a plastic tube in it. The tube um, just uh, attaches into a device that lets it float. When the green wax melts and goes to the bottom, then you know the water, all the biological contaminants in the water have been killed. The package also includes a set of bread pans, and it includes the multi-level dehydrating and baking rack set. So you can, um, and by the way, besides for just using it for dehydrating, these are great for making things like flatbreads or quiches or cookies, and uh, then you can do multiple levels of cooking at the same time. Another thing that's included with the package is an incredible CD. The CD has um, over 600 sun oven recipes in a state of the art recipe software called Cookin'. The benefit of the Cookin' software is that if our recipe has portions for four and you know you want to cook for seven, you just change the number of servings that you want and it automatically changes then the recipe. It uh, also allows you then to, after you change the servings to be able to print it out. If you like printing on, keep your recipe on 3x5 cards, you can put it in that size or notebook paper size and create your own personal recipe book. And the cooking software on the cooking website sells for $79 and that's included as part of the this package. And there's also a preparedness for life program. It's a whole emergency preparedness planning program. It's got a lot of information to help you plan um, uh, your, for your preparedness and keep track of things. And that sells on the Cooking website for $29, and that's included in the package. So if you're interested in this package, actually, just for sticking through and watching this, um, you can get an extra $70 discount. If you notice in the upper right-hand corner of this slide, there's just a little green box. If you click on that, that will take you to a page that explains the package and uh, the $70 discount. Or there's a button below that you can click. If you're somebody who prefers not ordering online, would rather order by phone, you can call us at 800-408-7919, and that's during business hours uh, in the central time zone. That uh, phone number again is 800 408 
800-800-7919. So hopefully over the last few minutes we've been able to give you more information about Cooking in the Sun. And if you have any questions, please use the box on the right to um, show those, to um, be able to, to put those questions in and we'll be more than happy to get back to you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. God bless. <music>